Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Picks. My name is Peter Loshak, and uh, today is uh, Friday, March 3rd. We are doing our usual uh, preview of the main card of every UFC event that we do with Andreas Hale, MMA and uh, boxing analyst and uh, expert, and gives us great advice every uh, every time out. And uh, we've got a great card here for UFC 209 that goes uh, tomorrow on Saturday. Andreas, uh, maybe not necessarily marquee names that non-MMA fans have heard of, like Ronda Rousey or whatever, but uh, we got two huge fights, two of the best fights that you could possibly possibly make, I think, in UFC right now, right? I agree. Yes, definitely. The Tony Ferguson, Khabib, and the Medal fight is excellent, and the rematch between Tyron Woodley and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is uh, something that a lot of fight fans have been looking forward to. Yes, and, and from a handicapping perspective, it's interesting as well. Now, I'm looking at this. Obviously, Thompson Woodley is the rematch of the fight that was fought to a draw uh, in their last fight, and uh, the, it was Thompson, despite Woodley being the champion, is actually a pretty significant favorite here. Minus 165 is the latest uh, line I'm seeing for Thompson. Woodley at plus 145, and the total is at 2.5. The over is, uh, is minus one. 80 and obviously again the uh, the first fight went the distance it went to a draw now I don't know about I, I, I when I my first glance when I look at these lines is that Woodley has to be getting at least a little bit disrespected here and my second thought is that you know the first fight went the distance and I know that you know the Woodley's style which is very effective tends to eat up minutes but both these guys are finishers I'm thinking maybe this one ends inside the distance which might be uh, worth a shot at just a minus 125 what do you think about that or do you think we're probably going to see another uh, uh, fight here that goes to the cards well, I think neither of these guys want to leave it to the judges this time around. Right. So after, especially what happened the first time, it just depends on who's going to be the aggressor. Um, in, in this case, I think it might be Wonderboy. And if that's the case, it's going to be a tough fight for Woodley to deal with. He, you know, Wonderboy's got a style that, unlike any other in his division, he's an excellent striker. And there's a reason why he's a favorite is because mm -hmm. of that, his uh, excellent kickboxing background. Looking back on the first fight, if Woodley didn't catch uh, Wonderboy in the fourth round with that shot and nearly finish him, Wonderboy would have won the fight. So... I'm leaning towards this one ending inside of the uh, two and a half rounds, yeah. and I'm also leaning towards Wonder Boy as well. As much as I like Tyron Woodley, I think this is a very, very difficult fight for him. Right. And this kind of reminds me of you know I, we were talking about uh, March Madness uh, earlier, and uh, anytime the uh, the uh, the 11 seed is a favorite over the six seed, uh, they've covered six out of the last seven uh, times that's happened by a margin. So this is kind of that kind of situation when when anytime you have the challenger as a prohibitive uh, favorite over the champion, I guess the line is telling you something. Thing. But at a certain point, you have to say Woodley's getting just purely disrespected, right? I mean, how much of a favorite should Thompson be here? Yeah, I'm a little surprised he's this much of a favorite. I was expecting, you know, minus, a minus 120 maybe. Right. Um, something a little bit closer. I just feel like there's there's been this outright disrespect for Tyra Woodley for quite some time. He's been the yeah. underdog and I think it, like maybe his last five fights. And you look at the, the fight with Robbie Lawler, he was a significant underdog and he knocked him out. So um, he's going to fight with a chip on his shoulder, which means he may come out aggressive as well. So right. It's just a very difficult fight for Woodley, no matter how many ways you slice it. Um, he's going to have to wrestle. If he wrestles, then this fight goes the distance. But I just don't think with Wonderboy's takedown defense, um, him sharpening up since the last fight, and I look at it kind of like a boxing match with Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev. Mm -hmm. Kovalev got in front early, but once Ward figured him out, there was nothing that Kovalev could do. I think Wonderboy may have Woodley figured out in this fight. All right, all right. So uh, I'm not sure what I think about the side, but I definitely feel like uh, inside the, the, in the that the fight not going five rounds at just minus 125 is worth a shot. And if you think Woodley's going to be aggressive, because Woodley has you know concrete in his hands, if he catches Thompson, Woodley by knockout, but Woodley just by inside the distance is almost four to one. Does that not seem like it might have a little bit of value worth the flyer? Oh, absolutely. It definitely has some value. It's, it's going to be tough for Woodley to get inside uh, Wonder Boy's reach. I was looking at the two guys this week, and, and I, I, I was surprised to see how much bigger and longer Wonder Boy was than oh, Woodley. Yeah. But with that being said, Woodley is extremely fast. He's surprisingly fast. He closes the distance well. You saw what he did against Robbie Law. You saw what he did against Wonder Boy. So I would take a, a, definitely a shot at that because he could catch him again. There yeah. are concrete hands. Yeah, I mean, Thompson is just awesome at using his length. I mean, that's what he's so great at. All right, I will give an official pick on this one. I'm going to say that the fight doesn't go five rounds minus 125. Andreas Hale, do you want to go official on this in any which way, or do you want to take a pass? Um, no, I'm going to go official. I'm going to say inside the distance, and I'm going to go a wonder boy as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick him. Uh, I just feel very strong about his kickboxing right. ability to neutralize Woodley and what he has to offer. All right, so two picks inside the distance, minus 125, and uh, Thompson at uh, minus 165. And then the other fight, which is also awesome, uh, Nurmagomedov and, uh, and Tony Ferguson, both these guys, you know, in their primes at the top of their games, facing off uh, again, uh, you know, considering uh, how – I mean, I wouldn't want to bet, you know, against, uh, against Nurmagomedov at all. 
overall. But at the same time, when I look at these lines, uh, Khabib minus 180 and Ferguson at uh, plus 158, I'm thinking maybe the dog is getting a little bit disrespected here. And again, just like with the first fight, I think maybe the uh, the best way to bet this one might be with the total. And I'm thinking that this one, uh, if it doesn't go the distance, at least goes over three and a half rounds. The fight going the distance minus 125, over three and a half is minus 160. And that's the way I'd be leaning. And I'll ask you again, Andreas Hale, uh, you know, as great as Nur Nurmagomedov is, is Ferguson getting a little bit disrespected here at plus 160? Um, no, actually. Okay. Nurmagomedov has been dominant in all of his fights. He's 24-0. Okay. Uh, he's unbeaten for a reason. However, uh, as we're speaking, there is, you know, I, I saw some Nurmagomedov yesterday, and I, w I didn't like how he looked. There's something about his weight cut, that cut that's looking very brutal and is wearing on mm -hmm. him. For that reason, uh, then I would dump a lot of money on Tony Ferguson. Uh, the energy may not be there. You know, it, there's a lot of things going into this fight that are coming in at the, the 11th hour that we should take into consideration. So with that being said, now is the time to put some money on Tony Ferguson. Right. And, but I wouldn't go with, as far as a stoppage. You know, obviously, the Mega Medov has never been beaten, so he hasn't been stopped. Ferguson's only been stopped one time in a, in a regional promotion back in, like, 2008. So this thing should definitely go the distance. But I... I I would like to say at this point in time, if you're going to bet some money, put it on Tony Ferguson. Right, right. All right. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, uh, again, I would lean towards a dog as well. But definitely my best bet would be, uh, what do you think is better, uh, over three and a half rounds at minus 160 or that the fight goes a distance at minus 125? I'm thinking maybe over three and a half rounds just in case something fluky happens. One of these guys gasses a little bit and something fluky happens in the fifth round. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'd say the over three and a half rounds. Yeah. Um, one way or another, this is they, these guys are gonna be a little bit more cautious with each other. They both have granite chins. Again, like I said, right. uh, you know, the only time Ferguson lost, he was submitted. He was not knocked out. And Nurmagomedov is a pretty brutal guy, but. You know, these guys are going to, this is going to be a dog fight. They're going to be here for a while. Yeah. So I, I like the over three and a half. Rounds. All right. Just so everything's clear, I'm on official uh, over three and a half at minus 160. And what are your official picks on this one? Uh, I'm over three and a half and 160 as well. Um, but it, right now, I would run to the sports book and put some money on Tony Ferguson just because of the things that I'm seeing with right. Khabib. I don't like how he looks. Okay. But is that a lean or is that an official pick for our videos here? Uh, we're going to do that as a lean. I'm okay. Not take it All right. Okay, good. And then we have uh, Rashad Evans and Kelly, and this is another one I'm thinking uh, might go the distance. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, Kelly is uh, is appearing here at, at 185. Uh, sorry, Evans is appearing here at 185, and Kelly is a, is a 39-year-old uh, Aussie who's, uh, you know, getting, uh, you know, his biggest shot at the limelight here. And uh, I'm thinking this is also one that, uh, you know, Evans is minus 235. He should be the favorite. How big of a favorite should he be? I'm thinking one way or another, though, this one goes the distance as well. What do you think about this one? I think, first of all, that Rashad Evans is too big of a favorite. Mm -hmm. they, you know, right. He's had some issues making middleweight. He couldn't get licensed to fight in New York. He couldn't get licensed to fight in Toronto. So something's wrong here. For him to be a prohibitive favorite at this point doesn't sound good, especially at a minus two, you know, over 200 yeah. is ridiculous. Um, for that reason, I would take the, the underdog here. Uh, but aside from that, I think this will go the distance. Rashad hasn't looked great in his last few fights either. So right. this middleweight cut could be a rejuvenation for him, but I just don't see him stopping anybody. I don't see him getting stopped either. So I yeah. think this goes the distance. And he has had problems with southpaws, and Kelly, of course, is a southpaw, and that's, that poses more, uh, more of an issue for, for Evans. Uh, would you agree with that or not really? No, I would definitely agree mm -hmm. with that. I, like I said, Rashad Evans is a little long in the tooth. He's a little bit older, and it's showing. You know, all old yeah. fighters don't necessarily show, but he's not right. the same spry fighter he was when he knocked out Chuck, Chuck Liddell. So yeah. it's a little bit different here. So he's, he's in a tough matchup. Yeah, clearly. So, But you think he's got enough to, to make this one go to the cards? You think that he's going to be – his skills are in such decline that he actually might get stopped early? I don't think he'll get stopped early. I think he's still right. Rashad Evans. You know, the chin's usually the last thing to go. So right, right. chin and power is the last thing to go. I think he'll be able to hold on. I think this will go to three rounds. All right. I'm taking the fight goes the distance at minus 130. Are you going on that officially as well? Absolutely. And uh, you want to take Kelly at plus 195 or no? No, I'll lean on it, but I'm not going to make an official pick. All right. And then the other uh, two fights, uh, Lando and uh, and then also, obviously, the, the Mark Hunt fight, which is uh, Hunt and Overeem. What the hell's going to happen there? Two, uh, two aging heavyweights, of course, Overeem uh, subbed Hunt in their first fight about uh, 10 years ago. Do you have any uh, way of betting either of those fights that you think might have some value? All right. If you're going to go inside the distance, you got to pick Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt will definitely <laughs> right. not win a decision on this night. And Alistair Overeem has a glass jaw. It is what it is. Yeah. We've seen it happen time and time again. So I would bet the under and Mark Hunt if you want to go that route. If you want to go with Overeem, you have to bet going over right, and right. with Overeem. So one of the two. I'm personally, I'm going to make my official pick. I'm picking Hunt and the under. Hunt and the under. So Hunt is plus 120, and the under is one and a half rounds at minus 115. See, I'm thinking, I'm agreeing with you. I think Hunt has some value as an underdog, but the under, it's just that you don't know what's going to happen here. I could easily see them being uh, cautious or whatever. One and a half rounds, not that many uh, minutes there, right? 
No, there's not a lot of minutes there, but all it takes is one punch to end somebody's night. And of all people, Mark Hunt is the one-hitter quitter, and Overeem has that fragile jaw. All right, uh, so under one and a half rounds, minus 115, and Mark Hunt are two of official picks for you, and uh, I'm going to stay off that one. And now let's just uh, quickly touch on uh, GSP, right? The return of uh, of GSP. Uh, The early opening uh, lines that I've seen are GSP as a a small favorite over Bisping. Uh, It's planned at some point in the second half of 2017 is the last that I've read, but uh, nothing has been uh, pinned down as far as a date is concerned. You think GSP is insane here to, uh, to, to come back and take this fight? And how much of a, of a, skill, of a, of a diminishing skill set do you think we'll see from him? Any thoughts? You know, this is really you know, interesting. Uh, GSP at middleweight against Michael Bisping, a guy who nobody thought would be middleweight champion, is a very intriguing fight on a number of levels. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, though, if GSP's wrestling, if he'll be able to take down Bisping at will. I get why he's the favorite. He should be the favorite. He's athletically superior to just about anybody in the welterweight division, and that may go for the middleweight division as well. So if you ask me right now, I think GSP, he's not crazy. Bisping has a great puncher's chance to win this fight. Three and a half you know, years away from the cage, though, makes me hesitant to bet on George St. Pierre. He got lumped up by Johnny Hendricks. Um, he's been touched a little bit more in his previous fights, but I think he'll play it safe, and I think GSP can win this fight with a lay and pray style that nobody's going to want to see. All right, so so you don't think we'll see much of a diminished skill set from him, or 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 we will? No, I think the wrestling is always going to be there, and I think George St. Pierre has always been extremely smart with what he does in the octagon. I don't think he's going to try to exchange punches with Michael Bisping. So I think he's going to play this very smart. I think he's going to – his intelligence, I look at mm-hmm. him kind of like a Bernard Hopkins. They're like right. that. That foundation doesn't change, and I don't think it'll change against Bisping. All right, you've heard it. Andreas Hale willing to answer the tough questions. Is GSP crazy? Andreas Hale weighs in with no. Andreas Hale, thanks so much. Talk to you again very soon. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.